All right, everybody, let's talk all things negative splits today, both in running and cycling, but particularly doing and nailing your best FTP test or getting a PR on a mountain climb by using negative splits. I did one of these videos a few weeks ago, or I'm sorry, a few years ago, and I rewatched it, and I said to myself, my goodness that is awful so if any of you have watched that video i am very sorry that you had to suffer through all of that negative splits is one of my favorite concepts to work with new athletes and to continue to hone the concept and to drive it through my relationship for the entirety of that relationship with any athlete that i work with negative splits for me is it's 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 learning your physiology and learning how to trust in your physiology. But more than that, it's to learn to trust the science of watts, right? So I can tell people to do things. I can give uh, pacing suggestions for this part of the race or this part of the race or this part of the race. If they don't trust watts, then it's not going to work. And they're not going to nail their goals. I can almost guarantee it. If you learn to trust your physiology, if you learn to trust in that science of Watts, then you can be the best version of yourself. All right. What are negative splits? Basically, you got a, um, you know, you got a mountain climb. Uh, you have a track race. Uh, you have a, um, you know, an FTP test, uh, FTP test 20 minutes. And basically the idea of negative splits is that you start that effort easier and you end harder, right? The ability to run or ride negative splits teaches you how to manage your energy and pace yourself throughout a race or training ride. Let's look at how a track runner will approach the concept of negative splits, right? Because it's pretty easy. Once around the track, you have a time. Go around the track again, you have another time. The concept of negative splits was really popularized in New Zealand um, in the 1950s and 60s, but by the time we got to American uh, kind of the golden age of American uh, running with uh, Steve Prefontaine, they were already using negative splits. In fact, Steve Prefontaine, uh, to, win, to win one of his major races in high school even, practiced negative splits to get his PR and to win that race. So let's look at a race that was just run uh, right before the Olympics. And uh, Jessica Hall now has the women's 2000 meter world record. So let's look at her pacing strategy to get that world record in the 2000 meter. So here, that's Jessica Hall right down there. And this is her pacing strategy. The idea of negative splits, once again, is slow start, fast finish. So here we see her first lap, 64.2. Her second lap, 64.2. Third lap, 64.1. Fourth, 63.2. Last lap, 63.0. Now, why is this? The idea is, is that if you start off too hard, if you race too hard at the beginning, if you go out too fast, your body is going to build up all of these byproducts and waste products of this physical effort that you then have to carry throughout the entire race. So if you go out as fast as you can and your strategy is to go and race as fast as you can and die a thousand deaths throughout this race, you're not going to hit your PR. You're not going to do the best that you could do on that day. So the idea of negative splits is if you're going to build up waste products uh, you know, associated with lactate production, things like that. If you're going to build all that up, build it up at the end of the race when you can <laughs> collapse at that finish line. It doesn't matter how many waste products you have in your legs at the end of that, that race across that finish line. Get off the bike and collapse. But if you start too hard, you build up those waste products, you're not using your energy most efficiently, and you're going to die a thousand deaths throughout that race where you can see she crushed her laps. And you can watch this on YouTube. There's a great, it's, uh, it's just like five minutes, but you can see her go slow. 
and she's going fast, right? <laughs> but she's, you can see her, but you can see her in that last lap where she just drives it on. If she would have tried to reverse this pacing strategy, she would have been coming home in 65 second laps, maybe even a 66 second lap rather than a 63 flat last lap, okay? Now, this was, uh, I mentioned Steve, Pronf uh, Steve Prefontaine. This is a great movie without limits. Now, remember, Steve Prefontaine did use negative splits, uh, that training technique, that racing technique when he was in high school. But they actually made it a part of this movie without limits. One of my favorite all-time sports movies. Watch this movie because there's a great discussion between Steve Prefontaine in college and Bill Bowerman, his coach. Uh, Steve doesn't believe in negative splits. Bill Bowerman's trying to teach him about negative splits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great scene. Watch that movie. All right. Now, let's talk about FTP. This gets to your FTP test, okay? You got an FTP test. You got a 20-minute block, okay? Now, you can either go out too hard, die a thousand deaths, and call that your FTP, or you can start a little easy. You're going to start below your FTP or your, you know, your, uh, um, um, estimated FTP, you can start below, then you can raise up and then you can leave it all out there on the table at the very end of that 20 minute effort. I have done hundreds, hundreds of these with athletes, anywhere from a 13 year old girl, all the way up to a 72 year old woman and everything in between. And I'm telling you, if you learn how to trust your watch, if you learn how to trust the science and understand your body, you will receive the best FTP that you can get, right? So here's an FTP test. Here is the 20 minute interval from an athlete I just tested the other day. And we can see that this is his power trend line as it goes up and we can see he left all of it out. So what people do when they first start doing an FTP test, they want to reverse this. They want to go out way too hard and then they die a thousand deaths and then they get a number. But if you can dial in your physiology, if you can dial in your habit, boom, look at this. This is a perfect. And so this is how he did it. Starts off at 280 watts, settles in for, you know, five minutes, then goes up to 290, then this section 295, and then this section 310 watts. That is, that people is how you're going to get your best FTP effort out there. Okay. Now we want to do a climb. You want to get your PR in a climb. You're going to want to race a climb in a race, right? Well, it's the exact same thing. 280, 290, 295, 310 is going to produce a better score than if you're going to start off at 310 and die a thousand deaths to get to the top of this mountain. Team Sky became really famous in this. Um, whereas, you know, all this racing up to team sky, there was more, you know, more, uh, rider against rider attacking each other, response, attack, response team sky comes in and they said, no, we know how to get our best Watts. We know how to get our best time on this climb. And it's not just attack, attack after attack. We got, you know, a lot of, uh, great examples from Bradley Wiggins, Chris Froome, Grant Thomas, where they just said, Hey, you guys can attack each other all you want. I'm going to settle in my climb. I'm going to do my best Watts and I'm going to pace this thing, uh, for my best time up there. And they would ultimately, this is how they won so many tours in so many respects, and that they would pull time back from those guys that were out there just trying to crush each other, attack, 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 attack. All right. So I hope this was informative. It's all about getting your best time out there. It's all about learning your physiology and even shorter efforts like a five minute test. You can still pace it and still use this strategy like a one minute you just you're out there it's a hail mary pass you're just going to go as hard as you can but for like a five minute anything above a five minute you can use the science of negative splits i've used it to pace my best century right so i start off you know my 
I'm no different from anybody else. I would go too hard, go too hard on these centuries, and then die a thousand deaths to get across the finish line. Once I learned all about negative splits, you know, I'm starting easier, starting easier and crushing that last hour, producing my best time, finishing stronger than I ever would. Even for my guys that are right now doing 24-hour events on the bike, I'm, 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 well, first and foremost, getting them to not go out too hard. That's the number one goal. Settle into watch, trust the watch, trust the science, but we're really trying to work with them. Go out a little bit easier, and I'm telling you, you will have so much on the back end of that race. Less stopping, less fatigue if you go out a little bit easier in the first half, the, those first 12 hours, or you know, the first six hours at least. All right, I hope that uh, makes sense, everybody. And if you have any questions about negative splits, uh, reach out. We'd love to talk.